Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Honeybee Stamps and in today's video I'm going to be creating this rainbow card using the Friendship Frame Stamp and Stencil Set. So here is a quick look at a couple of the products I'm going to be using. I have the Friendship Frame Stamp, Stencil, and Die. And then I'm also going to be using a sentiment from the Thinking of You Big Time, which is another one of my favorite sets. Before I do any ink blending, I'm going to take that large floral image and I'm going to stamp it down onto some smooth white cardstock. I am going to be stamping it in a light, kind of light grayish or kind of light brownish ink. This is Pebble from Concord and Ninth. I personally like to start by stamping in a light color first versus going right in with the black. Now, when I stamp it down, I am going to leave this placed in my Misty tool just as it is, so that way I could come back and stamp on top of it when I am done ink blending. One of the reasons that I do this is that I am reducing the risk of me smearing my black ink. Sometimes if I don't wait long enough, I can end up smearing my black ink. So I figure by starting out with a light color, I'm just reducing those chances. So before I get into these stencils to color in my image, I am going to create kind of a base layer. I guess if you were looking at this in a painting perspective, you would almost call this underpainting. So I'm going to call it under ink blending. I'm just going to give this a light layer of color. I do want to go in a rainbow um, assortment around the frame. So I'm going to start in one of the corners using a very light pink ink. These are all going to be Concord and Ninth colors. That first color was pink lemonade. Then I moved on to nectar. My yellow is going to be Buttercup. And as I move around, I'm just slightly overlapping the colors so they create a smooth transition. When I was thinking about how I wanted to do this card, I picked out two different shades. So for the pinks, I did a light pink and a dark pink. Same thing with the orange and the yellow. So this is all going to be the light colors that I chose. For my green, I went with the Concord and Ninth Sea Glass which is kind of a minty green. It's really pretty and just kind of a different shade than what you may normally see. And then for the blue, I am going to be using Tide Pool. Now I didn't do any purple. And the reason I didn't is that because I know when I overlap my blue and my pink, it is going to give me a shade of purple. So I didn't need to really include that in this. So after I kind of have my base layer of ink blending done, then I can start bringing in the stencils to color in the image. Now, Honeybee Stamps uh, stencils are clear. So what I'll do is tape my cardstock panel down to my work surface using some post-it tape, or you can use a sticky mat, whichever you're comfortable with. And I'm going to bring in the first layer. All of the stencils are uh, labeled in the center. So it's like large flowers, one and two, small flowers, one and two. In my case, I don't really need to pay attention to that because I'm going to be using the same colors of ink throughout all of the stencils. I'm gonna go through the first layer or two of the stencils and then afterwards I'll kind of speed it up because it's really going to be the same process. I started with up in that top corner using a pink and that was Sweet Pea Ink. So it is very bright, vibrant pink. Then I moved on to my orange. For this, I am using Spiced Cider, and as I got towards kind of the last couple layers of the stencil, I did bring in uh, Clementine. No, I started with Clementine, and I brought in Spiced Cider, which is darker, only to kind of give it a little bit more depth and dimension. Now, for my next color here, I brought in, I think this one is Juniper. I jumped the gun a little bit. I really should have came in with my yellow. Now, I did not want to add the juniper right next to the orange because that would not look good once it's kind of blended together. So I kind of just moved ahead a little bit and went over that sea glass area with the juniper. But I did come back in and bring in my yellow. Whenever I am blending over the open areas of the stencil, I try to consciously think about what color is next to it and underneath it. And I also want to kind of blend them together so it looks like a seamless blend. Now up towards the top, I'm going to be bringing in Oceanside and that's going to represent my dark blue. As I overlapped the pink, you can see I have some purple there. So I'm going to repeat those exact same steps. I did speed it up a little bit. I'm going to repeat all those steps using those same colors with all the different layers of the stencil. 
It is kind of fun to overlap certain areas of that base layer I created. So for instance, I could overlap that yellow with some of that sea glass that's down in the bottom left hand corner. You just want to be mindful that you're not coming in with maybe the orange over the sea glass because that wouldn't look very good. So here I went through all of the layers. I'm just going to give you the reveal. This is another layer and you can see how the image is slowly coming together with that beautiful rainbow look. Now the very last layer of the stencil is going to be adding in the centers of the flower. So for this one, I am bringing in a black and I'm going to be adding in the centers. You could also do maybe some gold paste I think would look really pretty, but I wanted to do black, which is going to look weird at first. I know this is kind of odd, but it is all going to tie together once I restamp my image. So I placed my panel back into my Misty stamping tool and I'm inking up the image in the intense black ink and I'm going to stamp that down. So you're going to see that that black outline ties in really nice with the black centers that I created. I'll then take the coordinating die. I'm going to line it up over the frame. So this is creating the frame. So I'm holding that down with easy C tape. I'm also going to take that center piece and hold that down as well. So it's going to die cut out the entire frame and the center. This would be really great for a shaker card and a lot of the steps that I'm going to take, you could do a shaker card with. I knew that I wanted to add a la large sentiment to the center, but I also want to add dimension to this. So the easiest way I found to do this is to take some acetate that's trimmed just a little bit bigger than that center piece. I lined it with double sided tape and then I'm placing that on the back of my framed panel. So that's going to, you're going to be able to see behind it. It has this really nice opening, but it's also going to give me a place to put my sentiment. So it's not kind of sunk down in the middle there. So here I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. I'm using big hugs, which is one of my favorites off of this thinking of you big time stamp set. I stamped it twice in the intense black ink, and then I'm going to die cut it out with the coordinating die. I also die cut it out two more times from some white cardstock. I'm going to add some liquid glue and attach these together. So that's going to help build up that dimension for my sentiment just a little bit. And then I'm going to take some foam tape and layer that behind my frame. This is one of the steps where if you really make sure your foam tape is connected, you could create a well to create a shaker card, but I'm just using it to create some lift. So this would look really pretty just on a white card front, but I decided to really tie in the rainbow and I took another piece of smooth white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to go around all the edges with those same colors of ink that I previously used all the lighter shades. So that would be pink lemonade, uh, nectar. I think it was, I may have brought in a little bit of clementine, buttercup, sea glass, and tide pool. I forgot that I wanted to add splatters to this and I already have my acetate there. So I took that negative piece and I'm placing that over my acetate window. That's going to protect my acetate. And then I just mixed some white paint with a little bit of water and adding splatters to my frame. I'll then remove the foam tape from the back of my panel and I can place this over the top of my ink blended panel, just making sure that all my colors line up like I have the pink in the background it matches the pink flowers on the top. I'll take my built up sentiment. I'm going to add liquid glue behind that and place that over the center of my acetate window. Once I have that in place, I'm going to take a heavy block and just set it on top for a second and I need to add my tittle. So of course I'm using my tweezers to help hold that. I can add liquid glue there and then add that to my eye so I don't lose my tittle there. And then also place that heavy block on it again and let that sit for a couple minutes. And I'm going to call that good. I absolutely love the rainbow of this. I love digging through my stash and using something that's been out for a while. I also just really love this sentiment set as well. It is definitely a go-to of mine. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching.